Coming up on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at AI PCs. These are brand new Windows computers that have an MPU built in and can hardware accelerate AI tests. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Thrott, and today we're going to talk about AI and MPUs and PCs that have them, the AI PCs. Um, this is something we've had in the Windows space for a few years, thanks to Qualcomm, but not that many people are buying Windows on ARM PCs. This past year, Intel and AMD have both had various initiatives to bring that type of hardware to PCs. The big splash occurred in December last year when Intel introduced their Meteor-like processors, which they branded as Intel Core Ultra microprocessors, kind of setting them apart from the traditional core processors, right? Core i5, Core i7, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the first gen is kind of a one-off. Next year, we're going to reconcile everything into one big family of chips. But for this year, what we have is a set of mobile-only chips, H and U series, if you're familiar with those, uh, H is for high performance, U is for ultra mobile. Um, we have Core Ultra 5 and Core Ultra H variants, where the seven, I'm sorry, Core Ultra 7, where the seven variants are the more powerful of the two, but they're all pretty impressive. So these are hard, uh, hybrid architecture chipsets where, uh, as you can see in this diagram, the, the CPU, the GPU, and for some reason not shown here, the MPU are all on the same die. Intel uses a kind of tiled architecture, which allows them to plug and play with different parts in there, different uh, CPUs with different types of cores and so forth. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then this past January, uh, we saw a, a bigger explosion of releases of PCs based on this chip. So there were a few in December, and then we saw more in January as well. So back in December, I was able to review one of the first AI PCs, the HP Spectre X3614, kind of a neat convertible computer. Um, the computer I'm recording this on is a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, latest gen. Same thing. It has the uh, the Intel Core, I, uh, I'm sorry, the Intel Ultra Core 7 processor, same processor I saw in the HP, et cetera. Um, and this is the culmination of actually now about a year's worth of work that started with OpenAI and ChatGPT and DALI. Microsoft came out with Copilot, which has been rebranded a few times and uh, lots of different releases there. Windows 11 has been picking up AI features throughout uh, the year. We discussed some of those, you know, paint, photo, snipping tool, et cetera. Obviously, Copilot, Windows Copilot. Um, and, but now with this new generation of AI-based PCs, I think things are going to start to change. It's going to be a really interesting year. We have rumors of, a, not rumors, actually, Microsoft has confirmed them now of a 24H2 release coming later this year. Uh, the next major release of Windows 11, previously Windows 12. Um, and so I think we're going to see a lot more AI stuff uh, going forward. So looking at this particular computer, let me get this uh, image out of here. Um, they're just like regular computers, right? So this is an Intel x86 type chipset, hybrid chips, of course, but still the basic, the same basic architecture. Um, the HP I had reviewed earlier was a convertible form factor. This uh, Lenovo is a traditional laptop. All right, so there's no real surprises from form factors and that kind of thing. Um, the big deal here is that hybrid architecture. This particular computer, actually, we can just look it up, is almost certainly uh, yeah, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, it is a um, yeah, one terabyte uh, SSD, really fast storage, et cetera. So that's neat. But it's the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H that's of particular um, interest here. So 16 cores, uh, six performance cores, eight efficient cores, and two low power efficient cores, which are new to this generation. Uh, this allows the thing to run uh, when it's not doing anything on a very low power mode, similar to ARM-based computers, right? But again, the big deal, GPU and MPU integrated in. Those things together are called Intel AI Boost on the Intel side. AMD has their own branding, obviously Qualcomm does as well. Um, the trick here though is, whether or not we need these things, right? So if we bring up Task Manager here, we'll see something new, which is that we go to the Performance tab here. 
In addition to CPU and GPU and Wi-Fi and disk and memory, there's this new NPU measurement. Um, if the computer is using the NPU, you'll see this thing trigger some spikes. And so we know that there are AI features built into Windows. So for example, I'll do it this way. I'll, I'll load up Copilot here. And we can see that nothing is happening here. The GPU might have jumped a bit. I bet the CPU jumped a bit as well. I'm not going to really do anything here, uh, but you can uh, just know that uh, it doesn't matter what you do here. It's not going to trigger the MPU, right? Um, and we I think we talked about this in an earlier episode, but let's go through a couple of quick um, AI features in different applications. So actually, the best thing to do might be to just go to where the pictures are, right? So if I go to this picture of me eating a taco, which is kind of a classic now for some reason, and load it up in paint, and then we'll bring it down so you can actually see it. Um, it has this uh, background uh, blur feature. But before I do that, actually, let's tile these things so you can kind of see them side by side so we can see what this does to the various performance metrics on the computer, right? So I will, if I can find it, uh, click the blur background. It's going to do its thing. And you can see over here and over here, these things are going pretty strong. That spiked a little bit. That spiked a little bit. MPU didn't spike at all. So it's not using the MPU for this. This is just coming right off the graphics card. And that actually sort of makes sense because until two seconds ago, the graphics is all we had to run AI-based tasks, right? Um, Microsoft Paint also has this co-creator feature. So you can say something like uh, a, I always do this a kind of silly a version, like a purple unicorn flying through the galaxy. Um, kind of a nice little thing they have here is you can choose the style watercolor painting, oil painting, et cetera. I'll just do digital art this time, click create. And again, when we look at these different metrics, nothing is happening on the MPU, but lots is happening on the GPU and uh, a little bit maybe on the, on the CPU. This usually goes pretty quick and it's hitting a web service in this case, and that's why. And then you get this goofy picture of a, a unicorn, <laughs> right? But uh, kind of a cool feature for paint, but again, doesn't take advantage of the MPU. So I wanna save that. Um, we also have something similar for photos, right? So actually, I just open it traditionally. Photos opens, same thing. I'll tile this with uh, the task manager, edit. And photos has various AI-based uh, editing functions, one of which is ba background removal, like in paint, but also background blur, which I think is kind of cool. And you can kind of vary the intensity. And again, as you do this, you're not seeing any action on the MPU at all, uh, just so you can see that it's actually blurring the background there. Yeah, kind of a cool effect, it's nice, but it's not doing anything against the MPU. Uh, snipping tool has a, a, a text extraction feature, which is AI based. I'm not gonna run that now because we're actually gonna do a, a new episode on snipping tools soon. But the one other one I will note is that we have uh, an AI based feature that runs off of cameras called Windows Studio Effects. This is actually a set of features. Three of them are audio based, uh, I'm sorry, video based. One of them is audio based. Um, this particular computer, because it has an MPU, actually will show this as a feature you can access in any, can any camera app. If this was a non MPU based computer, you would not get these options, right? Uh, the point here is that we uh, you know, bl uh, blur the background, uh, turn on eye contact, turn on automatic framing. And um, this is going to run off the MPU. Here's the problem. So <laughs> when I was doing this back in December on the HP, you can see a very clear spike here um, in the, on the MPU. As I look at this here on this Lenovo, there's no spike. So I know the MPU is there because it's this kind of a chip. I know the computer knows it's there because Windows Studio FX is appearing. However, I can't explain why it's not triggering the MPU. I think this might be a, a bug. I'm, I've not seen this before, so I'm not sure what to tell you. But uh, you will have to take my word for it. This is running off the MPU, or it should be anyway. Um, and the point behind that is that the MPU isn't super powerful like a GPU, but it's good for certain things. And it's particularly good at things that are going to last over a long duration of time and be something very steady. So the video effects are a great example because you might go into a video call for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever the time frame might be. And you don't want this hitting the CPU or the GPU because that will kill your battery life if you're on battery. Uh, but if it hits the MPU, it's super efficient. It's a great way to do that. Or it would be if it was working on this computer. So I don't, uh, I was looking at this earlier today and I, I, like I said, I can't explain it. Unfortunately, it's kind of a terrible demo, but typically 
Windows Studio FX uh, will run off of the MPU and wouldn't be available otherwise. So that's what we have for now. It's not a lot, right? We have a lot of um, AI, AI features and some Windows apps that run either locally off the GPU or CPU, if that's all you have, or over a cloud service like Copilot does. And the question is, what's it going to look like this year when we see more and more software that actually runs off an MPU? You know, we know that Stable Diffusion is out there. That's GPU based right now. Adobe is all over AI, so you can expect to see these features in Photoshop and all of their other apps. Um, it's an open question what Microsoft is going to do in Windows 11. But as I record this, we're still in the first half of the year. Uh, 24H2 is obviously in the second half of the year. There are going to be betas and so forth. And hopefully we're going to see some more action on the client side. Um, and this will become a bigger deal. So if you are in the market for a new PC in 2024, I guess the question here is, well, do you buy an AI-based PC? And as a technology enthusiast, my answer is like, yeah, obviously you do. I wouldn't personally buy a new computer this year without getting one that had an MPU built in, even though it does literally next to nothing at this point. Um, but that will change. Like I said, the question is how much it will change. I think for more mainstream users, honestly, this isn't going to matter. Uh, this year, and maybe, you know, for the short term, we'll see. Um, but you have to kind of look out at, at how long you think you're going to own the computer and uh, what types of tasks you might be doing on that computer. I think local AI is going to become a much bigger thing. And it almost has to, I guess, arguably, but I think it's going to be a thing. And I think hybrid uh, AI that runs partially on an MPU locally and then in tandem with a, uh, a cloud-based service is also going to be a big deal. So, I, I, I don't want to tell you to run out and spend a bunch of money on an AI-based PC. These are p premium computers. They're typically pretty expensive. But like I said, if I was in the market, um, that's what I would be looking at this year. Okay. I wish I had a better demo for you, but it's early days. <laughs> well, we're definitely going to be looking at AI a lot this coming year, so you can expect more. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can learn more at uh, twit.tv slash HOW, and I will see you next week. Thank you. Video versions of this podcast are available to Club Twit members. You can find out more at twit.tv slash Club Twit.